that therefore i have nothing to worry hold on moment you are attached to something and your sense of security depends upon wealth or health or looks or scholarship or x or y you are in trouble so in spirituality if it is asked what can really free me from fear bhartrahari's answer is vairagyam eva abhayam if you have no attachment spirituality doesn't say you should not have wealth have more wealth than warren buffett and bill gates put together who cares spirituality says have wealth have beauty have talent have scholarship have anything you want but can you remain inwardly unattached can you be in a state of consciousness where your happiness does not depend on these things tomorrow for some reason if your wealth goes or health goes or your talent goes your looks go with two tear drops coming down your cheek that's it next moment you say okay now let us see what we can do that is called spiritual maturity that is vairagya so maharshi assured in the 20th verse we saw last that ego's death means the emergence of an all pervasive i therefore it's not end of the story it is a great beginning of divine life today we see 21 and 22 now sri maharshi ramana says to us that this new i alone is the true i what earlier dominated the scene was a false i please see 21 ahami idam aham pada bhikyaman vaham idam aham pada bhikyaman vaham ahami lina ke pyalaya sattaya ahami lina ke ಇದಮಹಂಪದ್ರಿಯ ಪ್ರಾಣಧೀತಮ ಸಜ್ಜಡೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಪ್ರಾಣಧೀತಮ ನಾಹಮೇಕಸ ತಜ್ಜಡಸ idam idam is a pronoun idam means this reference therefore is to the immediate previous verse where it was said upon the destruction of the limited i which is the ego in us another i which is parama purna sat emerges so referring to that parama purna sat the complete i the full i the infinite i maharshi says this alone really speaking deserves to be called aham aham pada abhikyam abhikya means name this deserves the name i that other i which you took for real was a big mischief maker i must tell you a simple example around 1950 india had gained its independence and indian constitution was being prepared as you know 1950 january 26 only after some two and a half years of independence india was announced as a republic with its own constitution till then there was a transition all of you have heard the name of babu rajendra prasad 
He then became the first president of India too. He was a member of the Constitution Committee, <coughs> as were Baba Ambedkar and others. And as you know, committees means differences of opinion, some friction. Sometimes in any committee meeting, things can go quite bad. X accusing Y of some bad conduct, A alleging that B has been jeopardizing everything, going against the interest of the institution or organization. So Babu Rajendra Prasad apparently was the target of some criticism by other members of the Constitution Committee, because even as they were framing varieties of lines, sentences, statements, constitution of every country is the ultimate authority. <coughs> Everything else is in line with the Indian constitution in India. Here in the USA, the American constitution. We the people, I guess, that is how it begins, I guess. So, Rajendra Prasad was very hurt. He felt so bad at the accusations made against him, he came, he came to Mahatma Gandhi and said, Bapu, I am very hurt. I am going to resign from this constitution committee. Let all of them make whatever they want to make and let it be the, the top guide for this country to proceed. Rajendra Prasad said, I am hurt. And Mahatma Gandhi says to him, Rajendra, are you hurt or is your ego hurt? Look at the question. Are you hurt or is your ego hurt? Next time you feel sad, you may ask yourself, Hey, am I sad or is my ego sad? And equally when you are happy, Am I happy or is my ego happy? What is this? What is the difference between ego being happy and you being happy? According to the Vedanta, the ego becomes happy, becomes sad, the ego does a Tandava Nritya every day. But the I, the true I, does not have any changes. It is of the nature of happiness. Taittiriya Upanishad of Yeju Veda says, Raso Vaisaha. Rasa means bliss. But you and I are not anchored in our true I. We have been hijacked by the bundle of memories called ego. So when Maharshi says, Idam Aham Padavikyam, the true I emerges, shines forth. When the false eye subsides, it was said, this alone is what deserves to be called I. The other one is an intruder. <coughs> the other one is an imposter. The other one does not have the true credentials. The other one needs to be banished. This is the true I. Idam aham padavikyam. How do you say that? Anvaham. In Sanskrit, aha means day. Anu aha means every day. Pratyaham, anvaham are synonyms. You know the word aha. See, afternoon or mid middle of the day is called madhyana. Aha. Madhya ahana. Purvanna is forenoon. Aparanna is afternoon. In lot of languages we use that. So, aham is day. Anu aham, every day, all the time. Ahami lina ke. As it said, even when, for example, in deep sleep, which sometimes you experience in the middle of a class like this. Don't you? Not today. <laughs> if you don't mind a one minute humor, once I was addressing a large gathering. After I came down from my platform, one person came and very emotionally said, I must thank you, I must thank you. I said, what? 
I've never got such sleep as today. <laughs> I said, that is wonderful. Now he had a question, Swamiji, I heard you are leaving tomorrow. How do I get such sleep again the tomorrow onwards? Uh, we are ready for all such situations. I said to him, that is how we have some books written by me. They are almost as effective as my lectures. <laughs> After I leave the town, till I come back again, read my books, you will get such good sleep. So Maharshi Ramana coming back says, in deep sleep, dreamless sleep, we don't have any bundle of memories. We neither think I am great nor think I am low. That is when the aham, the ego, has as though got dissolved or has subsided. Even there, he says, alaya sattaya. Laya means dissolving. Alaya means there is no dissolution of this pure I. I. This is a Vedanta position. Vedanta says, whether there are thoughts or not, whether there is sense perception or not, you are of the nature of existence. You are and there is awareness. Pure awareness. That is a laya. Laya is dissolution, a laya. This pure I does not dissolve. Therefore, this pure consciousness deserves to be called I and not this passing show. I am good. How long? For some time that thought stays. After some time, another thought, I am bad. As the idiom goes, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Somebody wrote that novel, where I guess <clears throat> a schizophrenic kind of personality is described. During daytime, he is a very gentlemanly doctor. But at night, something happens, he becomes like a wolf and he will he is known as Mr. Hyde. I have not read that novel, it's an English classic, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Every one of us is to greater or lesser extent Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We have these coming. Dr. Jekyll, the good guy in us, rises after some time he has gone. Mr. Hyde rises, hurts everybody, after some time Neither of them stays. But what stays is the pure I. Therefore, through study and meditation, through inquiry, let us say goodbye to both Hyde and Jekyll and let us remain the true I. Idameva aham padavikyam. But tell us, we say to Maharshi, what is this I? <coughs> he says, look, generally, why generally, universally, you and I are identified with Vigraha. Vigraha here means the physical body, not some Vigraha of Rama or Krishna. Vigraha is the mass, physical body. Then there is Indriya, 22nd verse. Vigraha, Indriya, Prana, breathing and other energies. Dhi, the thinking intellect. And Tamaha. Sometimes we just are in some kind of a blank. We don't know anything. Right? The sense of I don't know. So, these are all things with which we identify. And the shloka says, Na aham, I am none of this. Let ideas of I am the body, I am tall, I am short, I am obese, or I am thin, I am underweight, whatever, let them come and go. Don't get carried away by those thoughts. Take care of the body, but try to inquire, am I this body? When the body dies, do I die? That is a spiritual question. The Vedanta's answer is, you don't. Swami Chinmayananda used to say very humorously, every body dies, nobody dies. The body dies, but nobody dies because everybody is actually the soul. So, na aham, and I am ekasat, and all these 
the body, the mind, the senses are asat and they are jada, they are inert. In the old tungsten incandescent lamp, you had a filament and somebody who sees the lamp first might imagine the <coughs> filament is giving light. The filament cannot give light. When electricity flows through that filament, there is light. Likewise, the body, the mind, the senses, etc. seem to have life in them. But the spiritual standpoint here is, there is something called consciousness. Today's medical science, today's science in general, is yet to confirm it. They are having departments of consciousness studies in various universities. What is consciousness? And by and large, today's materialistic science holds the position that consciousness must be an epiphenomenon of things that happen in the brain. It's an epiphenomenon. Matter is real, energy is real. Matter and energy may be interchangeable. 